Cuden antropu deinoteron pelei. Tuto, cae poliu peran pontu, cae merion oto corei. Peribrucioi sin peron hip oid masin, teon tetan hypertatan, gan, aptiton, acamatan, apotrietai, illomenon arotron etos eis etos, Hippeo genei poleon, cuponon, tepulon, orniton, ampibalon, agei, caeteron, agrion, etne, pontu teinalian pusin, speirae si dictio clostois, peri prades aner, cratei de mecanais, agrauluteros ores si bada, lasiaucenat hippon oc mas detai, ampilopons digo ureion tac me tatauron. Cae ptegma, cae anemoen pronemma, cae astynomus oragas e didaxato, cae di saulon pagon hipai treia, cae di sombra peugein bele, pantoporus. Aporo se puden ergetai to melon, aida monon peuxim uc e paxetai. No son da me canon pigas ximpe prastai. I've said to you that the power of the human imagination could be compared to a fire hose that's turned on and gushing an enormous torrent of water to a burning building. Well, imagine handing a fire hose of that, of that size uh, to a four-year-old child. Well, that's pretty much the situation with the power of the narrative imagination in the hands of a human animal. And the more that we investigate and explore and embrace and enjoy the beauty and power of the Sophianic narrative, the stronger becomes the imagination you use to follow that narrative. The narrative enforces the imagination that you give to it. In the mystery schools, they operated in cells, in groups of 8 and 16, precisely because it took that many people to sustain and steady the force of this narrative power, which, as I've said, is represented by the light streaming from the eye of the bull, Aldebaran. The importance of the Anthropos concept, if you will, the Anthropos principle, as Gnostic scholars call it, is that it affords, it, it implants in the human mind and in the human imagination 
a self-concept for the species. And so when each human animal can refer to that self-concept for the human species, then we have something marvelous, then we have something wonderful. And that is why I describe it as the species self-connection. In the 23rd chapter of Not in His Image, I explain that the effect was to imbue in the Anthropos specifically the sense of its own identity as a species. You know? And so I wrote here, uh, against the God-self equation, Gnostics asserted the species-self connection. To the ancient seers, it produced a permanent effect that is only evident, however, at the species level of self-conscious awareness. What does it mean for a human individual to be self-conscious at the species level? This is the kind of awareness that comes with the humility to see oneself as a member of the animal world yet belonging to a particular species of animal. It implies that we own our humanity most deeply when we sense the sublime modesty of being a human animal, the novelty of being an animal who is human, is how I would put it today. What is the power accessible to you, strong enough to correct and heal the centuries of psychological abuse from salvationist religion. Well, it's the power and beauty of her story. Because, in fact, the historical record shows, my friends, that if her story had not been repressed, none of that would ever have come to be. If Christianity was such a wonderful message of love and a message of the divine care of the Heavenly Father and the sacrifice of His Son, His only begotten Son, if all that were true, then why didn't the early Christians just let it coexist alongside the Sophianic narrative and see which one people chose? But no, there cannot be any coexistence as shown by his historical record of cultural and intellectual genocide in Europe and around the world. And the measure of that refusal of coexistence, as I've said before, is the measure of the power of her story. The only story, the only narrative on this planet that engages your imagination as a human animal in the heights and depths of its capacity. The other way is quite simply to know what you are as apart from who you are. The effect of that is the same as if you experience the organic light and that is such 